Hi. I'm finally drinking one of the stouts that's been sitting in my fridge for months. It's Beyond Good and Evil from Hill Farmstead. They're Imperial Stout with wheat, maple syrup, aged in bourbon barrels, and the aging time was nearly two years, it says. It's hand-selected bourbon barrels from one of our favorite distilleries. It doesn't say what one in particular. They use malted wheat and Vermont maple syrup. I've had their genealogy, which I think was is similar to the base beer for this, except instead of maple syrup, they use coffee. I don't know if I've had any barrel-aged stouts from Hill Farmstead. I've had their barley wine, <clears throat> but I may have not ever had a barrel-aged stout from them. So it's a little exciting. I think this batch is supposed to be about 10% alcohol. Oh, it's foaming up a little bit. Interesting, eh? It's been in my fridge safe for a long time. That foamed up a little bit there. Um, I took it out of the fridge for about an hour because I wanted it to be a little warmer to taste, and that started foaming up. I almost thought it was going to gush, which would be a bad sign. But this was bottled... What, what, let's see. October 10th, 2018. But I don't think it was released until like April 2019, and I've had it in my fridge since around then. Maybe not in my fridge the whole time, but during the summer I like to put these beers in my fridge. Even though we had a little foam up there, it doesn't seem ultra carbonated. Um, wasn't a huge head. Ooh boy, that's big, big on the bourbon and the nose there. Mm-hmm. It's smelling some booze, but I don't know if it's just like the, the bourbon influence, but it's really big on the coconut and smoky wood, char. <sighs> yep, my friend who had this really fresh, he said, ooh, it's pretty hot. And it's still a little hot. I'm trying to pick out the maple, but there's just so much going on in the nose, especially the bourbon, it's almost covering it up. This is, it kind of blends with the coconutty vanilla barrel qualities, maybe. Yeah, I'm getting it a little bit. But there's a lot going on. A lot of, a lot of char and sweet and wood and everything. Yeah, once you get used to the bourbon qualities, I'm getting the, the, the sweet qualities out of the nose. It's pretty nice. Mm. Oh yeah. Like from the smell, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be that sweet, but it is. It is pretty sweet. Not a gigantic pastry stout, thick mouthfeel, but it is. It is very full mouthfeel. And the maple comes in more on the tongue and lingers in the finish really nicely. There's some sort of slight dark fruit character coming through. I mean, I think it does have pretty good carbonation because I'm seeing a little. Some bubbles coming up in the middle here. So that's one thing why I'm glad I'm, I drank this because I, I wouldn't want it to like get more carbonated and get drier and, and thinner. It's at it's really good at this uh at this sweetness level and carb level. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's I'm getting these like sweet tobacco y notes, like backwood cigars. Yeah, and some nice dark fruit notes, which a lot of times if I notice dark fruit notes in stouts, it means it's not going to be chocolatey and sweet and rich. It has everything. <laughs> this has every quality in stouts that I like. It's, and it doesn't quite get licorice soy sauce. Where that, that's an area where a lot of these ultra dark strong beers, they can get a little bit of that, but I'm not getting any of that. Maybe a touch, a hint of anise, but not quite like licorice. Wow, this is... This is a very good beer. I don't drink these beers like this very often because it's just not my thing. But <clears throat> so something like this is it's, it, this is a, a next level. The amount of time is spent in the barrels. I don't know how they can make it come out being so good. It's got a huge bourbon presence, but it's not overwhelming. Mm. Mm. And the maple's there, but I feel like if you age this. 
it would uh, you'd lose a lot of the maple flavor. The uh, brewers recommend this beer is consumed six months of release. So it's released in April, May, June, July, August. So I'm well in, well in that, and I, I would agree with them, yeah. I think they probably you know, they bottle condition it and then taste it when it's ready, and then hopefully you won't age it longer. A lot of people will, but most people, especially with the whole pastry style adjunct craze, a lot of people realize, oh, you age these beers that have added flavors to them doesn't doesn't taste that they don't taste very good they fade away or they turn into something that's kind of gross and it's i'm actually i said i can smell the booze but i'm not noticing much of a booze burn or much booze flavor hmm. and i really like the fruity notes like on the tongue it's it's not as burnt and charred and roasty as i thought it was going to be it's, mellow and sweet and fruity and still mapley and oaky and all that stuff but very low in bitterness and not super tannic surprisingly like there's just a little bit of a dryness on the tongue but i think this this would probably make most pastry boys happy if you want something real sweet and flavored it's got that but it's not all about the flavors this is definitely a beer where you appreciate just the quality of the beer and the and the and the barrel aging. This yeah, this is one of the best bourbon barrel aged barrel aged stouts I ever had probably. And I have another one to review soon. Um, one of their ever changing series of blended stouts. I can't remember what it's called. That's really nice. And it's worth over a dollar an ounce probably for this stuff. I'd give it, you know, four, four and a half plus, four, close to four, seven, five. Really, really good beer. Not surprising though. 